I was a good basketball player. I wasn't a great basketball player. I was always at that level just below the the diehard. Do you really think the basketball players at our high school were great basketball players? Well, there were some. Yeah, I mean, the first string guys were. It was their lives. You know what I mean? It's what they. It's what they. All they did. Well, I mean, you know maybe I mean? you're right. And I, just, I, I was yeah. never one of those people that, that like made something my entire life. You know, I was like, that's who you are. Why? Why are you pretending you're somebody different? Welcome back to the show. There's no telling where we'll go. So come and share a laugh on the Imp and Skiz podcast. What if we changed our mind again and moved back into our old location? Our mind? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. No, it was a good idea. You know, I like changing stuff yeah, every yeah. every day, every minute. Uh, I always have to have something new. But I have a reason for it this time. This we, is so a good one. For our listeners, we are back in our old spot, our old studio They can probably spot. hear the difference. Uh, if maybe, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this room is much better sound treated, so yeah. probably sound a little bit better. A little more podcasty today, Yeah, but there's a Christmas tree in, the other <laughs> in our actual other podcast space. Yeah, yeah. My cat Luna decided to uh, destroy the Christmas tree the second I started putting it up, and we decided it just wasn't going to happen. So our big old 10-foot you know, Christmas tree is in... Uh, the room that we could typically record well, the podcast and in. Maybe Luna is a fan of our show. And, and she, and she, she wanted to yeah. try to make a cameo? No, no. She wanted the, the old good audio quality back. Ah. She's a, oh. she's audio only. But Yeah. Actually, I, I like the I like the scene. I like the setup. Yeah. I think it looks really good. It does. You know, I, I think last time we tried the setup, we had a couple problems. One, we we put a like desk in between us, like we yeah. were news anchors. Yeah, I don't know why know? we did that. We tried and then it. Uh, what was the other issue? Oh, it's pretty tight in here. It's, it's pretty very tight. very yeah. tight. Even even here without the desk, it was still not a super easy setup. Yeah. Like it, but we're, whatever. We're here. It sounds good. It had to be done because we got the Christmas tree out there, like you said. Maybe and, we'll stick uh, with it. And maybe we end up sticking with who knows, yeah. man. Because I, I will like the the audio is superior. Let's call it what it is. It's yeah. just it's much better in here because uh, of the way it's set up. But but here we are talking about what if and what if just, what if every time I say what if or uh, hear what if Tango I think of Tango's it. yeah Minecraft series from years ago where he said what if Minecraft had drones yeah. and he would code his own yep. video he showing it. what it was like. If Minecraft had drones and he Cyclopses owns what if. and all sorts he of stuff. He owns it. Like, yeah, like, like the way Paris Hilton owns That's Hot. Right. Like he, he could, he, when I hear, like you said, I hear what if, I hear Tango Me saying too. what if. Me too. So everybody's going to think of that now. But yeah, yeah today uh, we thought it would be a fun conversation to, to theorize what would happen if Something had changed in our lives if we if we'd gone left instead of right, yeah. you know, or or whatever, and and we could talk about what kind of butterfly effects yep. that may have had. Um, that's always fun. So obviously, who knows? You know, at the end of the day, we're just theorizing, and, and who knows? But uh, I think it'll be fun to go it's, down it, that journey. It's a hundred percent theory. It's a hundred percent trying to fill in the blanks. And there's a movie. Um, called Sliding Doors, and I, I believe I believe Gwyneth Paltrow was in it, if I'm not mistaken. I'm I'm really pulling from the bottom of the barrel here, like I, like memory wise, I don't really know, but I believe this movie had Gwyneth Paltrow, and it's called Sliding Doors. And the premise being that at one point, towards the beginning of the movie, she is uh, going towards uh, I believe like a like a commuter uh, like a subway or whatever, and the doors slide shut, and she wasn't able to get on. Mm -hmm. Right, she wasn't able to get on. But then in another version. She made it, and they they shut behind her, so she was able to get on. And the movie does this thing to where it's basically both paths of her life and what they would have looked like had she made it or not made it. And so this is, I mean, that was really the butterfly effect, oh, but yeah. it's the same exact thing. What if this had happened? Now, ours is going to be more based on, like, actual memories we have or, or pinnacle moments. Like, what if we had made yeah. this decision instead of that decision? And we, and we don't really have the capacity to, to dive into the what if of every little thing because there's just right. so much is lost on us. But but there's a lot. We got we got sort of a bank of things to, to talk about. Yeah, I think I want to go back to, like, the youngest thing, the youngest decision I could have made that would have impacted my life in a way mm. that I probably wouldn't be here today or have – at least gone the same career path that I did. And that was when I was in third grade. There was this like book fair type thing. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it was like extra books from the library that they wanted to just give to students so that they could get m new ones in. And so they just set a bunch of books on a table and said, hey, everybody go pick one book. It's free. We didn't even have to pay, which was cool. And, uh, and so I was looking through the books. And this was like 
a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> we're old. And I was in third grade. So, I <laughs> mean, old. this is this is uh, late 1980s, I guess. There was a book, and it was about computers. Mm-hmm. And at this stage in, in my life, like, computers were, uh, like, I was just seeing computers hit households. You know what I mean? Like, the the... 286s and stuff like that like the first computers that were were actually getting put into people's houses and people were playing midis and stuff on them and so i was getting interested in in computers and so i look at this book and it's like all about the history of how computers have uh, gone from mainframes and giant laboratories to you know uh, in the house and what they're going to be used for and then also the book had like predictions and stuff on what they thought computers were going to be used in the future which of course were all completely wrong but uh, I saw myself drawn to this book about computers, and I was in third grade, which I think puts me at like nine, nine years old, something like mm-hmm. that, eight or nine years old. So at that young age, I was drawn to computers, and and I, so I grabbed the book, I read it, and I, I loved it. I loved every everything about it, and I knew right then and there that computers were going to be my life, that I was going to do something in the technical field. I was going to go on to study computers in college and, and make a career out of it, and that's Jeez. how... From third grade, I ended up actually following that path and and getting a degree in computer information systems, and then going on to a Fortune 100 tech company and and being a developer and all that stuff. And it all started with in, that in third book. Grade. So, yeah. so the question is, did you you didn't go? Did you go looking for that book, or was it no, it? no? It was just a bunch of books on the pile. You know, I could have picked you know Boxcar Children or something. Yeah. You know, there's probably plenty of other books to choose from that that would have been uh, you know completely different but there was just a computer book and i was like that i want that i'm interested in that and i think what happened was i had just been at my friend's house and he had just gotten a new computer and he had played like beethoven like a like one of the beethoven songs Mm. in midi form (laughs) and i was like blown away like i I couldn't i guarantee you it was for elise probably i guarantee it was for elise yeah yep that one yeah that had to be it and so like i was just like whoa that's so cool i could do that and so i was into it yeah. you know it just so happened things lined up but let's say things didn't you know what i mean that's what we're talking about today what if what, what if, if what if i chose chose uh wayside stories from bayside school or whatever the heck that was do you remember Not <laughs> i got even that i got that title bit. completely wrong somebody's gonna tell me right <laughs> um uh, the, you know, I could have got some other book of, of like dumb poems or whatever. I think that's what that was. Anyway, um, I could have chose something different. And because of that, I probably wouldn't have been so into technology. I would have maybe decided to completely go a different path. Could, could have been. To where it There's no nothing, talent. Nothing to do with technology at all. Heck, maybe if I did pick up a book of poems... Maybe I could have ended up being a poet or, or got more into the arts. Right. You know what I mean? I could have ended up a, a drama kid and okay. then actually be good at improv today. <laughs> well, so, you know? okay, that's interesting because I've, I've talked about that play I did in like first or second grade, whatever mm-hmm. it was. What if my teacher had decided to just do a much easier assignment than have the class put on a play? Because when I say that I didn't know that I wanted to be involved in entertainment or acting, that's an understatement. I dreaded the idea of doing this stupid play. That was what was going through my head. (laughs) But once I did it and I had my character, I was so into it. I was so into becoming something and performing and that it just like it just flipped my world on its head where I was like, I think I want to. And that's because of that. I started actually doing acting. I was in I was in like theater works and stuff like that. And I was in like bigger production plays that were way outside the. Uh, the school, and it just set me on this path of I knew that I wanted to be involved in entertainment on some form. I knew I did. I I didn't know it before that. What if, what if my teacher did not do that assignment? Would I literally have no idea that I wanted to to do something like this? Right. Would I have not had the 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 reps in order to discover my own confidence and what the the riffing and the improv is? May, who knows? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Who knows? It would have not. I probably would have never gone into acting like actual like like you know, classical training. I would have never done that stuff. I would have never been in these big plays. I would have never been as comfortable in my, my skin as I be, became to be in that young age. And you might know a very, very different skiz right now. Yeah. You know, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> that man. is crazy to think. Cause the skiz I met was constantly <laughs> looking for things in his environment that was funny to him. Yeah. And whenever he saw something that made him laugh or made him think he would say, that's going in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, for the longest time, I was like, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? And finally, I asked you, what do you mean that's going in the movie? 
Uh, you would always have like a pen and paper or something like you would you would buy. I think you, no, you had like a tape recorder. Well, that was no. The tape recorder was because I dreamed of one day doing stand up comedy. So anytime that something kind of painted my head as that would be a good stand up comic act, I would mm-hmm. keep that. And that's and, what you were recording. Yeah, yeah you had a tape recorder. You <laughs> anyway. So the the that's going in the movie. You were just keeping keeping up here best you could yeah, in, the, yeah. in your head. So I was like, what is this about? And you're like, dude, I'm keeping all these funny moments and, <laughs> and I'm just documenting them in my head because someday I'm going to put them all together and make a movie. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be hilarious. So even yeah. then, like, and this was, you know, I met you in, in high school, I think your senior year, my sophomore year. And uh, so it was then, you know, it, that you already knew like that, that you wanted to produce entertainment. Yes. You, you know, like you said, you were taking uh, bits for a com- uh, Stand up comedian uh, th- thing that you wanted to make, you know, eventually be a stand up comedian if you had enough of them on your tape recorder. And you were also like designing a movie yeah. out of just random funny bits that happened in your life, which yeah. would have been funny. It would have been a nice mashup of just like stupid, funny moments. Yeah, which is some know? of my favorite movies are based on moments like that, like like clerks and mall rats. Right. I mean, it's just a bunch of random nonsense, but they're they're special in their own right because they're so relatable for when we're young and our brains are still soft and stuff like that's what Jay and Silent Bob are. That's what those characters are. It's just they're just so in the moment, you know? Mm-hmm. And so that's why I'm I'm partial to those movies. But you're right. It it started at a young age and and maybe I would have found it later, but maybe not, you know, because mm-hmm. I was I was trying my hand in a lot of different things. And here's here's a huge what if. This is a massive what if, dude. Massive. In fourth grade is when you can so I remember being like like third grade and I had to go to um there was like a there was like a concert that the school was putting on or something to that effect. And I had seen that these you when you get to fourth grade, you can be in the band. I mm-hmm. didn't play anything, nothing. But I saw that people were like playing these kids were barely older than me and they were playing musical instruments. I remember thinking that's really, really cool. And I wanted to be a part of that. So knowing that I'm about to be in fourth grade, it's time to start signing up for it. So like fourth grade, like I either just started or it's a week before summer. I really don't know. And so I, I didn't know anything. Here's what I knew. I felt like I wanted to be a drummer. I, I didn't know. So I went, I looked at the list of stuff. I was so stupid that I didn't know that percussion is drums. I didn't know what percussion was. Yeah. And I saw this word percussion. What's percussion? Percussion. I don't know what that is. I, let's, I guess there's no drums. But I wanted to do what I thought was the most difficult thing. And so I, I associated big with difficult. So I went to go to the tuba. Oh, my gosh. So I told my, my parents, I said, I want to play the tuba. And they're like, you do? And I'm like, yeah, it looks like, like it seems like the biggest feat. Like it's the biggest, like hardest thing to do because it's big. What do I know? <laughs> so uh, my dad takes me down. It's time to uh, go. We had to rent the tuba from the school. And I remember it was $12 to rent the tuba. And my dad forgot his checkbook. And he's like, oh, I forgot my checkbook. I said, you know what? It's all right. I don't I don't need to be in band. And I don't know why that was. Something just wow. weird, something like passed over me in this weird way to where I was like, it's okay. I don't want to. He's like, what? Are you serious? And I'm like, yeah, it's okay. He's like, you, all of a sudden you don't want to do it. And I said, no, I don't want to do it. Because I just like felt bad that like going back to the house and getting the checkbook and all that stuff. Anyways, I decided not to be in band. But the next day, this fellow tuba player who he's like, are you good? Are you going to come to class? Are you going to be doing this? I said, well, I decided not to be in it. He's like, oh, OK. And uh, I was talking to a buddy of mine. Uh, I said, I wanted to do drums. And he's like, why didn't you? And I said, because they don't have drums. He's like, what do you mean they don't have drums? It's called percussion. And I'm like, it is. He goes, yes, I'm doing it. I'm like, I want to be in it. And so, like, now <laughs> I wasn't tied to the tuba, so I went and talked to the teacher. He's like, yeah, you know, come on to class. You're already enrolled, to it, so don't worry about trying to move your schedule around. And I went in to do drums, and it was it became, like, really evident really fast. I liked it better than everybody else there, and I was not interested in messing around. I wanted to be good at it. Mm-hmm. And it set me on this path, dude, to where I just became a really, really good drummer, and then I got to do the marching band and the jazz band and rock band, orchestral band, like all that stuff. And, I mean, like what if my dad had not forgotten Ed, his checkbook? Oh, my gosh. Would I have just leaned into the tuba? You know what I mean? Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? I have no idea. Tuba skills! <laughs> <laughs> tuba skills. <laughs> that would have been great. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's crazy. That that would have changed a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Like a uh, a lot a lot because if we start talking butterfly effle- effect, mm-hmm. we didn't meet. You and I didn't meet if you meet. played tuba. I meet. wouldn't have. I wouldn't have met you. I wouldn't have. 
I mean, I guess you would have been in band and you would have been a tuba player, but uh, I think I can name two people maybe that played tuba in my in high school yeah, band. Like I, we we didn't associate very much. You know what I mean? No, no nothing wrong with the tuba. It's right? Like, yeah, every single instrument has its part to play. But I don't I don't know if I would have developed. I don't know. Okay, all right, this is gonna sound awful. I don't know how one develops a passion for playing the tuba. Right. I'm not saying you can't. I just don't really understand it. I and because I didn't I didn't take that path. I can see the passion in in drumming. There's just so many different angles to go. It doesn't it feels like tuba's pretty you're in orchestral man or you're in marching band. Mm -hmm. And if you're that that's it. Story's over. You know what I mean? And so that's but I could be wrong. I don't know. But all I know is that like drumming just Oh, had so many more avenues for me so i'm grateful my dad forgot his checkbook <laughs> yeah yeah like i said we wouldn't have we wouldn't have met because it was when i joined marching band my sophomore year i skipped my freshman year because i was pl uh, playing basketball and i yeah. didn't i didn't think as a freshman i didn't think i could do both so i dropped band to be a basketball player mm -hmm. and and then i found out my sophomore year that it that you actually can do both mm -hmm. it's hard because sometimes the schedules conflict, possible but you can do both yeah. and so i was like okay i'll try to do both and uh and i show up and and you were the section leader yeah. and and that's how we met you know so we we wouldn't be sitting here today i know and we definitely wouldn't be sitting here today if your dad brought a checkbook that's crazy and, the, and these are the conversations that just make you go wow life is crazy yeah like the, plan all you want yeah it's it's got a trajectory <laughs> of its own it i mean you can you can you can be in control of your own fate, but there are so many things in motion that you can't even see. That you know what I mean? It's yeah. one of those things like we only have so many senses, but there's there's things happening in the ether that we don't see. And yeah. so uh, that's whoo, there's another whole layer there. But. There's a good chance I wouldn't have uh, kept up with with drumming if I hadn't met my best friend in third grade. His name was Scott, <laughs> so we were the Scots. But uh, we he he unlocked something that he also joined band in, in percussion and we both did together because we we're best friends and we wanted to do it together but we kind of like brought out the competitive nature in each other mm. you know like he he's the one that helped me discover that how competitive i truly am and he is also and so they had like an award for you know band student of the year or whatever and it was like whoever like got good you know like like really put put a lot of effort into learning and, and getting good and so him and i <laughs> decided like we're both going for it, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. we both wanted that bad, and we unlocked that that competitiveness in a good way. It wasn't like it wasn't like you know I didn't want him to do good, you know what I mean? I wanted him to do good, but I wanted to do slightly better. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? and, and him the same way. And so like we would practice like crazy on our own, but then we would get together a lot and practice together and just really like bring each other up. And at the end of the year, uh, I think I got I got the award the first year. And then that drove him, you know, to do even more the next year. He got it the second year, and then I got it the third year, which is the last year. So, <laughs> so was, you won the two out of three. I, I won two story? out of three. So you know, <laughs> yes, you know, I'm competitive. But uh, without him, and without him, and that developing that friendship and pushing each other the way we did, I don't know if I would have gotten good enough to the point to where. I would have been sought after to join the drum line, sure. you know, in, in high school and actually audition and, and make it the way I did to meet you. Yeah. So like that could have easily changed the trajectory and I could have just not been a drummer after, you know, after the first elementary stuff that happened because I would have just not been into it. You well, know what I mean? exactly. And also, I mean, what if we were going to a different school where I, I mean, suffice to say the drum line suck. Like we were, yeah. we were very, oh, shoot, very there's schools fortunate. that don't even have music programs because yes, they can't dude. afford the instruments dude, and stuff. Dude, where my where my wife is teaching, I went to this. this granted, this a couple of years ago, I went to one of the football games, and I always like to check out the drum lines and stuff. It was like two people, oh. and I'm like, I I just broke my heart. I'm like, yeah. what is going on right now? The band was so small. The, it's not even a small school. It's just the band is so small that like it, it's almost not there. So, like, we could have gone to a school that, like, we were blessed to have the instructor that we had. Mm -hmm. uh, and and so what if we had gone to a school to where it didn't really, like, glorify that stuff and it didn't have a, a reputable program? Ours was one of the greatest. Yeah. And so what if that didn't happen? I probably would have lost interest really, really fast. I mean, you know what? I The proof is almost in the pudding here because by the time my senior year came around, that program had taken such a dive. I mean, I, I mean, it, there's something to be said for the fact that I, you know, I was in high school for four years and I had three different band instructors. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That, they just, they could not, 
they couldn't get their stuff together. Not the instructors, just the school, like the the board or whatever you want to call it. It was just a mess, right? And so what it ended up doing was it, it, it flipped the whole program upside down. So by the time my senior year came along, it was such garbage. I just stopped going. And that wasn't good. You shouldn't do that. But I stopped <laughs> yeah, going. Yeah, I was pissed at you. Yeah, I was. I was, I was, it was so a mess. excited after marching band was over. I was so excited that you and I were going to be in like orchestra, orchestral, orchestral band, yeah. band, and uh, and then I show up uh, ready to go. I'm going to play. I'm going to probably play the triangle because I'm new, you know. Yeah. And, and I, but I was like, oh, but I get to hang out with Skiz, so that'll be cool. And then every day I'd watch the door as the bell rang for class. No Skiz. Yeah. <laughs> like, Come on, man. It was just a mess. don't come to school. It was a mess. I mean, I, I did. I just came after to go to gymnastics and stuff, but it was a complete mess. And so what I, my point being is that it had I had lost it had lost my my passion, lost my my focus. Yeah. Now, gratefully, I had enough juice from the previous years to where I kept drumming after. But what if it was a program that was never? I mean, you know what I mean. I just probably would have given it up early and just yeah. gone and done other stuff because it just did not hold my attention. In fact, in fact, I was ready to quit before high school even started. Because in junior high, I realized I really, really like drumming. I do like this. But all these drummers I'm drumming with, they suck. They suck. And not just not just that I'm better than them, because I was way better than them. But it was not just that. It was that they had no desire to be good. What was worse than that, they had no desire to not screw around. And, and so it was like, I'm mm. trying to enjoy this musical experience. And you're met because you're, you're acting like such an ass, you're, you're blowing it. And the teacher, God bless him, he's like such a sweet guy and very, very yeah. talented, could not control the classroom. It was a nightmare, dude. So I was like, I'm ready, I'm ready to quit now because this is a joke. However, I knew the high school we were going to be going to, and I knew how good they were. I'm like, I just, I just got to stick it out with these boneheads. I just got to get through this junior high nonsense and I get to the real stuff. That's what that was. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I remember junior high, I kind of had that same experience where it like I was surrounded by people who didn't care yeah. except for one person. And I know you know who it is. I'm gonna say his first name, Adam. Oh yes, absolutely. And, and if it wasn't for Adam, uh he inspired me uh now at the drum set level, because that's that was his gig. In fact, he was in a band that uh, it was really cool to watch. Happen. Yes. But uh uh he's such a cool dude. Yes. And very, very talented. Yep. He just had the the skill, the instinct of it, and Overwhelmingly everything. Overwhelmingly humble, and that's the word I was going to say next. Yep, the most humble person, always yep. willing to take his time and teach me. Yeah, because you know, band directors in they the, they're not going to teach every single student how to play their instrument. They can't. They're just trying to get the ensemble together, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you need to learn how to play your instrument kind of on your own at that point, yeah. right? And so. Uh, that's what Adam was to me. He was kind of like my first unofficial drum instructor. You know what yeah. I mean? Because he would he would just like teach me. Because I would watch him play, and then my jaw would just drop, and I'd be like, "How?" And then he would just like give me his thoughts. You know, and here's here's how I felt that, and here's why I did that. Here's why I switched to, from hi hat to ride in this section because it makes sense. The timbre goes along with the heaviness, and I'm like, "Whoa." Okay, this guy's got it, and I paid mm -hmm. attention to every single word, and he just helped strengthen my passion once again. Because I think I think it was in the same boat in junior high, where it was like, okay, I had proved I'm good in in elementary school. Now what's there for me? And it was kind of a joke, mm -hmm. you know. Except for that, yeah. except for no, what Adam right. was able to teach me, and I was like, okay, now I now I love this. Yeah, again, he he was he was something else, and was he a year ahead of you? I think? Yep. Yeah. And he was, um, if you're, if there's any chance, Adam, that you're listening right now, you know who that we're talking about you. Like everything you just said about him, I'm in complete agreement. is, is the mm -hmm. talent and the humility and all that. And to the point to where I have, like, I have a lot of regret without him because two things. One, he joined the drumline for a little, we talked about this in a previous podcast. He joined the drumline for a little bit. And it was when I was just, I wasn't even, uh, he was a sophomore. I was a junior. No, I was a sophomore. He was a freshman. And he joined the drum line for a, a little bit, and I had to lead the line because for some reason all the people who were the authorities were the, the the juniors and seniors they couldn't be there. I don't really know. All I know is this: I had a very limited experience on how to lead a drum line, and my only exposure to it was to be a complete dick. Like that was it. Just be a <laughs> terrible dick to everybody. That was my only exposure. So I thought that's what it was. It was. I was young and stupid, and so that's what I did. I was over the top. Not. I mean, I was, but not specifically towards Adam. He was just part of the line or whatever. And uh, he never came back. And and to, I've always wondered, is it because I was, I mean, now I've always felt shame, but I don't know if it was his gig anyways. That's the first one. The second one is 
the following year when I was a junior and he was a sophomore was the first time I decided to give jazz band a go. And I didn't even, uh, I didn't even have to audition. Like the, 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 the instructor, the guy who runs, like runs, he's like, I, I show up for my audition. He's like, you know, there's a formality in, right. You're, you're going to be in jazz one, which is the most advanced one. I said, mm-hmm. I think you should audition me because I'm not a jazz player. And he goes, I, you're fine. Because my hands had gotten me so much notoriety. I'm like, this is a very different gig. Adam was good. He was a good jazz player. Mm-hmm. And uh, I said, I think you should probably audition me because I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not a jazz player. I don't know any, I want to do this, but I've got, I have no exposure. He's like, fine, we'll do an audition for fun. And so I did, and it was terrible. And I could see he was like, uh. And he's like, you know what? I'm fine. You're, I, I know who you are. You're going to be fine. And to his credit, I worked hard and I got the job done. However, because I did that, Adam didn't make jazz one. Uh. They put him in jazz two. Now he was younger than me, but jazz wise, I would argue he was not just better than me. I'm going to put him at about 500% better than me. He was about five times wow. better than I was. I, I I firmly believe that. And what does he do in response to that? He comes up to me. He's like, dude, you made jazz one. Congratulations. And I'm all, it should have been you. He's all, but it's not me, man. And he's like, it's fine. He, he, uh, he, this is a younger kid. And he's like, you're going to be great, man. Like, this is who he was. Yeah. Why we, this is an this is an Adam podcast. I have a man crush on Adam apparently as well now. <laughs> well, let's. I mean, yeah, he's he, he's yeah, a good dude. He's, he's a, a good really dude. good. And dude. it's like you meet some you meet people through the course of your life that uh, you would never expect can change it in those ways. Yeah, and that's what we're talking about. Like. Like had I had Adam gone to a different school, this is imprinting. Yeah, <laughs> we're back oh, on imprinting back to now. Bring it back to imprinting. Yeah. yeah, he imprinted on on both of us. Yeah, apparently he did. Uh, and and yeah, without continuing drumming, then we wouldn't have met. And everybody by now knows where we end up. Yeah, here doing a podcast together. Here doing uh, over a decade of creating content together. We've worked. How many companies have we worked together at? Uh, at least three. I can think of off the top of my head. Three? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, three. Yeah. Just three. So we've worked together at three different companies. Like we just like have been locked uh together ever since uh ever since you re entered my life after I came back from drum corps, which you weren't able to do. Mm-hmm. I mean there's a butterfly uh or there's a, a there's moment a for if. you, a what if like what if I didn't like, have my son so if, young. You yeah, know? what if you were able to join me uh, when I marched the drum line uh or the drum corps impulse. Right. You were invited to it, but it was just not a time in your life when you could go tour the country for an entire summer. Yeah, you know, I had a, I had a baby. You had a <laughs> What's baby. going to happen? Yeah, you it was a, a no brainer. You it was, couldn't yeah. just leave. Yeah. Um, but I went off to drum corps without you and uh, did my thing. And and when I got back, uh, you know, I was pretty proud of of how I developed. And I I wanted to show my former mentor what, what how far I'd come. Mm-hmm. And so we gave you a, a ring. Uh, probably on like a rotary dial phone <laughs> at the time. Uh, <laughs> no, you had to call the operator. Yeah, yeah. Switch what you got? I got a call seven. Can I do seven? Yeah. Here's your call. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so get together and, and uh, kind of show you how far I'd come along. And, and um, you could have taken that as a this dude showed up to shame me, make me feel bad, but you didn't. You were very like proud of to Super see your proud. former student. Oh man, you uh, were so good. Yeah, I'm like, advanced. this is awesome. And so I was I was super impressed that that it didn't just piss you off that I came yeah, to not at all. Uh, quote unquote shame you, uh, which was not my intention. It was somebody else pushing me in that direction. But uh, that's the day. That's the day that I was walking down the hallway, and and I think we've told the story multiple times. But if you haven't heard it, uh, I was going to go to the bathroom, and I looked into your room to the left and happened to see a book on the floor that said working, I think, <laughs> or maybe net, 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 uh, cause it was half covered with a, with a shirt. And I kind of did a double take cause I recognized the book cause I literally just bought it for a class I was about to attend at a, at a community college. And I found out you were thinking about going into networking as a, you know, as a study mm-hmm. for school. And I asked you about it and, and, uh, kind of said, Hey, you should join me as kind of like a flippant, joke in a yeah. way and uh you showed up yeah because you, you gave me one of the, the typical skiz answers yeah, that could know, be a thing <laughs> i don't know if you had that developed I don't think at the I time did, but it was but same. it was very much the same energy yeah. as when Non-committal. you say yeah that could be a thing and 
I do that too now because it's brilliant. But uh, <laughs> but I, I based off of that, I did not expect you to like show up and register and join me in that class. Mm -hmm. And if I hadn't seen that book and said something to you about it and gave you that offer and had you not actually like followed through with it, then we we wouldn't have ended up like reconnecting. I think it would have been that one time I showed yep. Skiz how much better I got and that check that off and now I go back on uh, with the rest of my life and he goes on with the rest of his life because we hadn't really talked to each other in like a year maybe two uh, at that point and I firmly believe I, I'm sure you do too we wouldn't be making this podcast right now right you know what I mean like the, it just led to so many of those things and, mm -hmm. and that's I mean this is really turning into a butterfly effect podcast but that's what what if is it is yeah and so it's 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 crazy I mean you wouldn't uh <laughs> it just goes and goes. I mean, it came down to the decision. Do we go to Morrow's or do we go to... Because <laughs> yeah, this is after we'd done this class together. Yeah, yeah. And we both realized, like, okay, we did this one class. One class at a community college. That doesn't mean we're going to actually get a degree and, and get a, a job in this career unless we do a lot more than just one oh, class at a yeah. community college, you know? And so we were sitting in the driveway. This is after class one day. And it was lunchtime. And we just gotten done with class, and we, we pulled into it to to my parents' house because we both lived at my parents' house at the time, mm -hmm. uh, which was fantastic. Uh, thank you, mom and dad, for letting us stay in our college years. And mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and we're sitting there in the driveway, and we were hungry, and and we made a, a thing to go to Barros like all the time. Barros was our favorite little pizza joint, and and we were young enough that we could actually have the metabolism that it didn't matter. Yeah, how much pizza we ate. Yeah, that was a good time. I've. I've gained like two pounds drinking this water. <laughs> and you look at me and you said, hey, somebody told me about this college and I'm kind of kind of thinking about going into. Well, my brother had graduated from it. Yeah. And, and, and this was a time that you have to remember, this is a time the industry is very different. This is a time where people in the tech field had a hard time graduating because the headhunters were getting them before the graduation was done because the, the, the industry was so hungry for that. And. And I had not only had my brother graduated from DeVry, but I, my boss at the time, because I was working at Costco, my boss at the time, I had mentioned to him I was thinking about it. And he said, that sounds like it would be unequivocally good for you. And he said, let me tell you a story about my friend who had also uh, done DeVry. He said he just got fired from the job that he's in. He lost his job. They had to, like, trim down or whatever it was. You know what happens when you get fired? You freak out. And so my buddy asked him, what are you going to do? And he said, I'll get another job. It'll be fine. And he's like, this is the tech field. It'll be no problem. He goes, yeah. he did. He literally, he goes, he didn't look for a job for like three weeks, and he decided, I okay, I guess I got to start working again. He got a job like this, so it was like, okay, that's where the tech field yeah. was. You know what I mean? So that's why I wanted yeah. to, you know. yeah, yeah. It was hot. It was hot. Plus, I, I was as soon as you mentioned it, I knew I already knew I was into tech because yeah. yeah, I mean, we obviously we did the networking thing, but since third grade, I, yeah, <laughs> I was into technology. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah. I was like, yes, this is what I want to go to school for. So. We skipped a, uh, we skipped Barrows. We went and took a <laughs> huge tour. sacrifice, dude. Massive, <laughs> because Barrows is delicious, bro. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. still to this day, I love Barrows. I know me too. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so we go and we take the tour, and like we were both sold, like big time. Like we're like, this is it. And the thing about DeVry, DeVry is like a, a focused tech school, if you're not familiar with DeVry. Uh, they take what should be a four-year college program and mm -hmm. squish it into three years. Right. Uh, and it's it's uh, trimesters, not semesters, yes. semesters. Uh, so there was literally, it was year-round. We had to go to school year-round. Year we didn't have summer off. Yep. Um, it was exactly what I wanted, too. It was another, I had a I had a young one, and it was like, it was time to, I needed to get more serious. And we were behind. We, uh, we were behind. We kind of... Like, yeah. I had gone off to a, a semester uh, to a college and decided it wasn't for me, came mm -hmm. back and dabbled in the community college and uh, just was kind of floundering, uh, as most a lot of people do me after too. high school. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, it takes time to find yourself, I think, sometimes. And, uh, and so we were in that space. And then so by the time we decided it was time to get serious, we thought, well, we're behind. This is going to force us. And <laughs> DeVry was, like, up front. They're like, look, our program's no joke. Mm -hmm. So... Like their dropout rate was massive. Yeah. Because a lot of people think they can do it, this condensed schedule, and like get after it. And then they realize quickly that they can't. It's just too much. It's overwhelming. And they drop out. Uh, so we had to make that decision. Are we going to be able to do this? Are we going to yeah. be able to push ourselves through? And we decided together we probably could. 
and we registered. That was a big part of it too. Was that was something that we had that a lot of the people who dropped out didn't have. Was that, I mean, we had each other. Mm-hmm. You know, and there were times where it was one of us was like, ah, and the other person's like, come on, you're fine. And then they then we would switch places. Yep. And and so, like you said, it was. And I remember it was it was it was hard managing that, like like working and raising a kid and doing Devry. And I think I had more than one job at the time. It was it was tough. It was yeah. tough. But, you know, we had each other um, to do that. So the what if was correct. It got us through college and we got, we did great after that. <laughs> right. We did. That borrows would have been so good though. I know. <laughs> Taste it right now. <laughs> what, if, what if we did? I mean, honestly. Yeah, what if we went what, to borrows? What, that's, that's the question. We'd probably the be question. working at borrows right now. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to borrows workers. Uh, no, you make uh, delicious pizza. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, who knows, man? Like, like if if we hadn't done that, would we have found our way back to college? Who Maybe knows? we wouldn't have degrees. Maybe we wouldn't have ended up working at such a massive company together. I can tell you, I think what would have I, since I was at Costco. Um, Costco is a career based place to work. It really is. Now, I, I, you know, I, maybe you, how do I put this? I'm probably now making more than a warehouse manager is. Yeah, at, 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 I'm. Very confident I am, but they make they make good money. You know what I mean? Mm. They they do it. And Costco, at least back in the day, was always competitive in how they paid uh, their people. And to the point you get you can't even you you can't even get hired there until you're 18. It's not mm-hmm. a 16 thing. It's a, it's an 18 thing. So I think Costco. I think they did a lot of things right. I I'm very loyal to that company after all these years. They do a lot of things right. Let me ask you a weird question. Totally off topic here. Mm. Uh, if if you could choose to go back to any job you've ever worked mm. and money was completely not an issue, oh wow, what would you go back to doing? Oh boy, because I know mine. Okay, if I could ignore all of the content creation stuff, get that like that's not part of the conversation, right? Because right. obviously that's what yeah, I want to no, do. But just like, like a regular, a, yeah. you know, regular a, a, jo- a classic job you worked in the past. Classic job, yeah. Probably the tire shop. You I mean, like changing could, tires. I, 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 it was like I did electronics at Costco. I did forklift driving. I did all that stuff. It wasn't, but, but it might have to do with spe- not only the tire shop, but specifically that crew that I was with. We were all brothers, and it was just, we were all so very, very tight. And it was basically, if I worked a, a six hour shift or an eight hour shift or maybe a 10 hour shift, it's just, you're just working out. That's all you're doing, you're just working out the whole time. Mm-hmm. Like I was in incredible, you're just lifting all day. And, you, you know, you're kind of the only thing I didn't like was I was always bleeding. My knuckles were always bleeding from being so dry from washing them so many times and stuff. So if I could have gotten around that, that would have been nice. But other than that, like just just getting dirty and just lifting all day. And I know it sounds so crazy, but if you don't do your job right and it's 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 a story that's been told over and over again, people. I mean, if you don't do your job right, you could set somebody up for injury or death. You can. Mm-hmm. And so there was something to be said for getting a, a big family van or truck or a dually or whatever and knowing when they drove when this guy drove off with his family i was 100 percent confident that they are perfectly fine I, I know i did my job right i torqued everything i torqued everything right i checked all your brakes which I, I did everything correctly i am con- like your, your family your favorite things in the world are on those tires that i put on there and i know you're going to be fine like there was something mm. oddly satisfying about that yeah yeah that's awesome i'll tell you mine uh <laughs> whoa i just realized we worked in a place the same place, but not together. So I worked at a place, and so did you at some at one point, I'm pretty sure, where it was uh it was like a theme park, an indoor theme park. Oh, jungle gyms. We can say it. Okay. Yeah. So jungle gyms playland. <laughs> <laughs> we did work there. Yeah. yeah. So this place was like it, it it had like birthday parties and it had an arcade area and then it had like little rides, like little indoor rides, you know what I mean? Like teacup style type of stuff. Sure, sure. All pits, all that. But there was a kitchen in there. They served food, obviously, for the birthday parties and the people, the patrons. Uh, but it, this was like a branded one. It was it was a Pizza Hut, like mm. Pizza Hut kitchen, right? So we had we had actual pizza ovens and we had the dough from Pizza Hut come in and stuff. And so I got a job there working in the kitchen making pizzas. Favorite job ever. I loved it. Absolutely loved making pizzas. Mm. I that I would go back to that in a heartbeat. I would love to go back to making pizzas. Really? If, if it didn't matter how much I got paid. There was just something, I don't know, therapeutic about it. I really enjoyed making pizzas and then like looking out the window and seeing people consume the pizzas Aww. that I made and just, you know, because 
you watch people consume food you make and it makes them happy and it makes you feel happy. Like I did that. I made that. I hated you know working I mean? there because I, but I never did the kitchen ever. I was a, a like a, a party planner. I was party a guy pro. running party, party, party pro, pro, party yeah. pro. So I was out there doing party stuff, running for families and stuff. And, and it was, I did okay. And they liked me and stuff, but I just, that was, woo. I don't, I love kids. I don't like that many kids, and, and and I don't, and 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 especially like when you're around that many kids, you're going to run into a great many like punks, like like really, Bad eggs, like yeah. they just have their parents have no regard for any sort of discipline or whatever. And uh, did you ever <laughs> did you did you ever dress up as oh the the, the mascot <laughs> yeah. guy put the suit on? Uh, you know what? I don't think I ever did. I think I was like. So against putting that suit on <laughs> Dude. that I I was like nope every time they'd ask me nope find somebody else I had done it a handful of times and I remember one time I did it or one of the times I, well several times when I would do it I'd come out and the kids would you're so much taller than <laughs> than you normally are because I was <laughs> taller than everybody that had worked there yeah because we we're all sixteen year olds you know yeah that yeah there pretty much that was a job it was a specifically a job for sixteen year olds it yeah. felt like one kid came up dude and he would not stop punching me in the junk. <laughs> Like speed. They, bag. they don't put like a cup in the uh, no, uniform for you. No, huh? this kid thought he was so funny, he just punched me in the junk, <laughs> and I kept trying to block and like edge him away, and he wouldn't stop. I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. and I was like, ooh, ooh. and I just, like shoved him. And he went oh, back. Yes. Yeah, I was like, just come on, man. But uh, anyway, so, so you should have done it at least once as a rite of passage. I never worked in the kitchen, and so I can imagine, I can understand, I guess, why. Great. I bet you it was very similar to why I like the tire shop. You're kind of all in your own little thing. You're kind of you got you perfect your craft and and all. That I like stuff. making stuff. I yeah, li- yeah. You know what I mean? We've talked about it. Like, oh, if I could choose another, you probably thought I was going to talk about like becoming a carpenter or whatever. But uh, it's not a job I've had. So, sure. but like the idea of being a carpenter, I, I find fascinating yep. because you make stuff with your hands and and you have an output. You have a product at the end of the day. Same thing with making pizza. You know, like I loved it when they would allow me to make my own pizza, my own personal pizza for like lunch or whatever, mm. because I would do creative stuff. You know what I mean? Like I. I made a cheeseburger pizza once, and I'd never heard of anybody making a cheeseburger pizza, so I was so super proud of myself, and it was, like, the most amazing thing I ever ate. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm good at this. And then, sure enough, like, a month later, there's, you know, the okay. Papa John's is selling you could hamburger have, pizzas. You could have dressed up as the mascot well but with that voice you just did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, I'm good at this. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I really enjoyed it. I tried other things there, too, and I, I didn't, you know, obviously ride operator was, like, usually the first thing that they put you in. You know, the person that stands up there and sure. presses the button yeah. to make it go, and it has to go around and check everybody's seatbelts, and then also has to clean up their puke when that happens. Oh, you know no, that job you. was terrible. No, thank uh, you. Which is why I quickly asked if I could work the kitchen. Yeah. But yeah, man, I I could see myself going back to uh, to that. We had a manager at at Intel where we worked that uh, his dream when he retired. Do you remember? Yep, he was to, to be, be a, a greeter, greeter at, at Walmart. Walmart. Yeah, <laughs> that was his dream. Yeah. And I always kind of looked at him like, "Are you crazy? What do you mean? Yeah. You, that's that's your dream job." But I suppose you could get gleam the same thing out of my story. I would go make pizza, you know. Yeah, but you're but I disagree with you, man, because you're actually making something. You're making something that people are enjoying. The 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 <laughs> the greeter is just there. It's just standing He's to there. cheer people up no, as they come in. I'm not believing you're it. Nobody something. comes into Walmart and after that greeting, they're like, man, I feel a lot better than yeah, I did before. Yeah, you walk out of the parking lot, you're in a bad mood, you're like, oh, there's so many people in the store. I gotta, oh, they're probably not going to be out of stock of what I need. And then the person at the front door is like, hi, welcome to Walmart. And you're just like, oh, this is great. No, I feel happy. Yeah, no, thank that's, you that's, for no. The, the warm welcome. Welcome to Costco. I love you. Welcome to Costco. I love you. Do you remember that <laughs> from the movie Idiocracy, dude? Oh, yeah, Idiocracy, right. Uh, <laughs> All right, I have a what if for you. Okay. What if, now really think about this. Minecraft, sorry. What if <laughs> you never broke your arm? Ooh. Mm-hmm. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, because that's kind of what turned the path from yes, me pursuing is. basketball, uh, my basketball passion, and kind of coming back to drumming. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, that wow. Uh, so yeah, the story behind me breaking my arm. I think we've told it mm-hmm. on the podcast, right? I was playing basketball and I could actually dunk, which was crazy, and fell and broke my arm. And then I couldn't play basketball. I had to watch my teammates because I was already on the basketball team. I had to watch them finish the season without me. Um, 
And after that, I kind of started to lose passion for for pursuing basketball. So I probably would have stuck with it. I would have probably continued to to play basketball. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I would have made varsity, but I'm also pretty sure I would have been like third string on varsity. Why, Why do you think that? Um, I I was one of those people, and I still kind of am, where I feel like uh, the ninety percent kind of rule plays into everything I do. So. I was very good at getting good, never good at getting great. You know what I mean? And so I, know I was what the sentence means. I was you... a good basketball player. I wasn't a great basketball player. I was always at that level just below the the die hard. Do you, you mean... really think the basketball players at our high school were great basketball players? Well, there were some. Yeah. I mean, the first string guys were it was their lives. You know what I mean? It's what they it's what they all they did. Well, I mean, you know maybe I mean? you're right. And I, just, I, I was yeah. never one of those people that, that like made something my entire life. You know, I was like, that's who you are. Why, why are you pretending you're somebody different? That's who, this is who there, you are. There's always that like 90 percent rule. Like I said, you get to a certain point and it and it took you. X amount of effort to get there, and you know that last ten percent is going to be over twice the amount of effort it took you to get to ninety yeah, percent, and so it becomes hard to do that last ten percent. And I was always one that just always just kind of just like, kind of was kind of wish washy around that last bit of effort it was going to take to get me to the top. Okay. So I don't know if I would have. I mean, maybe if I'd stuck with it and become and continued to get more passionate than I was, I may have made it my life. But I still think I would have just been okay with making the team. And being on the bench. You know what I mean? Okay. Maybe. I don't know. You were really good. So who, who knows? But it's crazy because the, the breaking of the arm, that's why I say, what if you never broke your arm? You didn't kind of like playing basketball. You loved playing yeah. basketball and you were very, very good at it. Yeah. <laughs> that was your that was your jam, dude. That's what you did. I don't think you would have ended up drumming. I don't think that I again I there's a very Yeah, I'd good... already kind of quit drumming at that time. Like my freshman right, year, I didn't right. do any drumming yeah, at all. Yeah. And I think that if if you didn't have that injury, you would have been, uh, you would have stayed on that trajectory. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. You know? uh, I yeah. Like I said, I don't I don't see myself like becoming you know a starter and then even like going to college and doing it. You know, I I did have my my limitations on on skill and height as well <laughs> was always against me. So, you know, who knows? Who knows? But I I I definitely wouldn't have gone back to to drumming. I think I I would have continued playing basketball enough that drumming would have been a thing of the past. And then mm. once again, we wouldn't have met. Well, I'll tell you, here's a what if. Now, this is not decision-based, but it's more like what if things had uh, played out a little differently in my life or whatever. But what if I actually got to know my grandpa, my my Ooh. my mom's dad? I never got to meet him, right? But he reminds me very much of my, my current, my, well, my, my father-in-law. Um, to where he's like heavily involved with the grandkids and stuff like that. Now, I don't know. My understanding was he was also like pretty athletic and stuff like that, but he was like, he was super into athletics, uh, you know, and that type of thing. And he was involved. I never got to meet him, but I look at the way my father-in-law interacts with his own grandkids. And my father-in-law has tremendous acumen when it comes to sports in general. What if I had that growing up? I don't think I ever would have drummed. I, I don't believe so. I think I would have stuck with baseball. Baseball was like to this day, like with the exception of having thrown my arm out, like this is it's it's like losing a superpower. When I hold a baseball today, just holding it in my hands, just holding the baseball makes me feel like this weird power that I can't exercise because I'll rip more in my in mm -hmm. my shoulder. So I can't throw right now, which is it bums me out. But had I never quit baseball, had I like had like a mentor who could do for me, what my father-in-law does for his grandkids in this in the world of athletics, I have always wondered that. Like, I wonder what kind of camps I would have been introduced to or what kind of maybe mm -hmm. stars I would have met or whatever. Well, who knows, right? And I think to myself, like, all my baseball experience, like, I started very, very young, and I was, like, instantly, you know, on the all-star team with with no real training. or, or not, I mean, Like I said, we've talked about it before. I had to throw the ball to myself and use a slanted roof. That's how I practiced, right? <laughs> Nobody in my household like knew how to do any of this stuff. So I it, it was all me and I was still making the all-star team. So imagine if it was actually the right like support structure yeah, or whatever. Got the tools you needed. Can you imagine? And here's the thing. The I, it would have been like the the ultimate I think I would have been the ultimate threat because when it came down to being good at baseball, being good at just throwing the ball and just 
having extreme speed and precision and all that stuff and being able to field the ball, I was obsessed. I, I was absolutely like, like it, almost in a sick fashion, obsessed with being the best version of myself um, from a baseball standpoint that I could possibly be. I wanted to be faster than everybody, stronger than everybody. I wanted that mm -hmm. so bad. And all I did was constantly work at it. Imagine if I also had the direction and the exposure to the right stuff. What maybe, maybe, and I'm out of, I mean, I'm, I'd be retired by now, but maybe the, maybe college was in my future. Maybe MLB was yeah. in my future. Yeah. I you mean, know? you had the, unlike me, you had the body type for it. I had like, the body type yeah. for it. Yeah. Yeah. Tall, tall. And, and skinny and, and very muscular. Yeah. You I know? had all the good stuff, man. And <laughs> yeah. it was just, and no, not anymore, but I had all the good stuff and I just, it just came naturally to me and i enjoyed it so very much but then my passion started to dissipate um through time as drumming entered my life and then also when when i i was no longer the best anymore i became more average i became more below average because i was faced up with a bunch of kids that were really i'm not saying they had better situation than me they they i think that they were just just better that was they were typically older than me but it was one of those situations where it was like if i god if i just I mean, my parents were super supportive in regards to letting me do what I wanted to do, but having proper mentorship and proper training and maybe lessons and stuff like that, not even in the vocabulary, you yeah. know what I mean? In the world of, of baseball or whatever. So I always think about that. Like that would have been something else. If I had, if I, if my grand, if I got to grow up with my grandpa, I wonder if that would have been something different. Who knows? Who yeah. knows? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really interesting to, to think like lack of, tools and support is is huge what, yeah, yeah like it, it it could make or break somebody in continuing something or or dropping out of something yeah we've, we've talked about that like lack of me having my best friend that pushed me in elementary school yeah. lack of adam uh teaching me in in junior high you know what i mean like all these yep. things um were the reasons that like i guess along the way it's it's almost like you got like a like you always have like a pilot light yeah. burning you know what i mean and sometimes you just need somebody to to kind of turn the knob for you to 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 make the flame get bigger, you know. That's and, good. And along our lives, we've had multiple people uh, support us in different ways, whether it's our parents and and uh, spending the money to to rent the tuba, or you know, it's friends that have have kind of like given us the the motivation through you know their motivation and things like that mm -hmm. that have like led us to continue pursuing things we otherwise would have dropped and then completely yep. gone different directions in our lives one thing i can tell you though just kind of like what i was worried about when we said okay we're going to talk about what if was kind of getting into that that dark space of oh what if this happened my life would be so much better and oh that's sad that that didn't happen and i can tell you right now everything we've talked about so far it's fun to talk about what if that had happened but i wouldn't take anything of back course not. of course not i wouldn't not. take anything back because had i not seen that networking book and had we not ended up with at devry and had you not let me sit in the front row next to my now wife mm -hmm. uh, when i met her day one of class at devry you know, then I wouldn't have I wouldn't be married to a, such a wonderful woman and have three wonderful kids right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And 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 living this this life that I am. So um, nothing, nothing, nothing would, would I want to change. It's just fun to talk about. It is. What it is. Could be different. Bar had we gone to borrows, not only would you not have this family, you wouldn't have you would likely not have this life oh, yeah. that you have now because that led us to the person who led us to Minecraft that led this to this. Like, yeah. it's just. Had we not gone to Taco Bell one day and created and, and yeah. decided to to uh, create a series called Naked and Scared based on a TV show that we were watching uh, together, then that series would have never gone twenty six seasons. Yeah, and hopefully counting. <laughs> yeah, can. hopefully counting. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, there's uh, there's just so many times in life that it's it's just crazy to think. It's almost mind blowing. Like it, it'll kind of melt your mind to to really think about how important little things are like the littlest yeah. thing if your t-shirt was just a few more inches over top of that book our lives are completely different yep it's crazy i know it's crazy what if think. i didn't have my my son so young you know what i mean maybe i would have stayed on a, a potentially self-destructive path and and who knows i i, I would have never got, i don't i don't think i would have ever gotten my my button gear in regards to the DeVry thing and let's, I gotta, I gotta get more serious. Here yeah. And make Cause they money. became very 
forward thinking, like I am a dad now that has yeah. to provide for this family. I got to do what I need to do. Yeah. I need to get my degree. I need to get a good job. I need to put food on the table, roof over their head. And, and, and that hits you at the right time because you were kind of spiraling. Yeah. Right? I don't think I would. I don't even think. And still to this day, like, like I don't, I've never belonged in tech. <laughs> Never. You know what I mean? I do well in it because I'm a good product manager and a, a good program manager and all that. I do that. I'm good with people and I'm I'm tech savvy enough to kind of make it so that my project management um, has that much more gravity because I, I know the stuff. But I don't know it to the level of the people who are actually part of the project and I don't want to that skill set anyways. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like I never had a passion for that field so i never would have done it i did it because at the time in our lives the industry was there yeah dude it that was, was there. it was like guaranteed you do this yeah. you will get a good job yeah and and that was like yeah that was that was it i that think that was appealing um my wife ended up at devry for the same reason you yeah. know her her and her parents are very logical people and saw that and even though she didn't have a history or much desire to get into the technology field she knew that she could get a, provide a, a, a good life. You know what I mean? She could she could have a good job and and, and make money and have a good life if, if she pursued that. <laughs> and she kind of after a couple semesters realized it wasn't for her and realized I'm actually artistic, not you know mm. wanting to write code the rest of my life. You yeah. know, and and so she ended up uh, going to a, uh, an art school. And now today she's making jewelry and and putting her art skills to you know to work which is amazing. that is awesome yeah like it's it's been crazy like every every day just about i go in for lunch we have lunch together uh, which has been it's been one of the greatest things about um doing what i'm doing and working from home and being able to and my wife also working from home is that we can we can have lunch together like every day you know we have that hour to uh to talk and, and see how the day is going but every time i go in uh we have to go deliver uh, or put her packages for delivery her jewelry that she's making that's like, cool every day yeah and i'm just so like proud of her you know what i mean like that she's continued to find the passion to, to put her passion to work yeah and and here we are now here we are putting our passion to work years years in the making right i mean you said it we said we wanted to make a podcast like what seven years so ago something ago. like that so long ago it took us yeah. this long to put it together but here we are now like, like we have followed the f fate, if you will, um, because I don't know what else you would call it. All these butterfly effects have led us here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And here we are sitting here making podcasts, making content, and hopefully making the world a better place. Hopefully. That's the goal. You know, well, whether what? it's through laughs or knowledge or, or whatever. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we, we always, like, sometimes there's little nuggets of wisdom, but for the most part, this podcast was designed to just be fun and be entertaining. I mean, listen to the jingle, right? But every once in a while, we get a little bit deeper with it, and then the question becomes, what if we never made the What's Stopping You podcast? We, the, the amount of feedback we've gotten specifically uh -huh. from that installment, what if we had never made that one? How many people, like, the, I just, I'm so overwhelmingly honored by how many people have talked about the changes that they made in their life because of that particular podcast. What if when we were throwing out ideas, in fact, I'm pretty sure that one was your idea. I'm pretty sure that specific mm. one, because we kind of, you know, what about, what if we do this or that? I'm pretty yeah. sure that one was, was your idea. Cause if memory serves, you're like, what if we do a podcast that's about like, what's stopping you? And I said, from what? And you said, just like, uh, you know, people have passions and you know, really what's stopping them. And I remember thinking like, that it's could be probably good. because I, I knew I needed to get my butt back in the gym and I was, I was struggling yeah. to get the motivation and I almost needed it more for myself at the time was probably <laughs> it. But, I, that I was works. a long time ago, but um, take that a step further. Is, is there a chance that we aren't continuing the podcast today because we didn't get that kind of feedback oh. that we were making a difference in people's lives and therefore we didn't think our podcast was worth doing right because obviously you know I, to peel back the curtains like monetarily this this podcast isn't isn't like a huge money maker for us this is a passion project mm -hmm. um and so we get together and we spend a day together you know every other week doing focusing on this podcast um because our driving factor is because we want to bring good to the world. You know yeah. what I mean? And so far we've gotten feedback that it's happening. And, yeah. and that's, it's, it's an amazing feeling. It's a very humbling feeling, but is there, is there a chance that without that feedback, 
you and I hung up our hung up our microphones <laughs> a while it's ago. Possible, you know, it's possible. It's still possible. Like, like we True. have to be honest about that. It's still possible. So, I agree with you. Like, what if we had not done that one, and what if we had not gotten that positive feedback that came? We maybe we would have hung this up a while ago. Crazy. Who knows? Crazy well, hopefully to we think. Don't. Then they would have missed out on so many good podcasts, especially. Yeah. You know, uh, been been digging. It's been a while since we've had a guest, um, but we will be, be bringing back some guests. And those are some of my favorite podcasts, yeah, honestly, is because uh, I love getting to know people, you know, mm -hmm. like how many people do you work with, you know, in, in your day job that you just know them because of what they do, what they, you know what I mean? Right. You know what they do. You don't know who they actually are. And it's kind of the same way with a lot of the creators that we've had on the podcast is I know what they do. Yeah. I've collabed with them. I've recorded clips with them and, and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, they, you know, and we have meetings and whatever. And, and, uh, but you never get to know them as people, you know, them from like their work environment. And, uh, when we have guests on, I feel like that's our chance to finally get to know what makes Scar tick what makes gem tick what makes x azuma yeah. tick like azuma was a big one like for for me when azuma was on the show i was, i was like dude i thought i knew you yeah it was so fascinating wasn't it but i yeah. didn't know you yeah like you are amazing like i knew it was amazing but you are amazing you know what i mean like and tango and every everyone we've had on been absolutely it's been amazing it's been outstanding and, and i'm looking forward to having more so i i'm glad i'm glad everything has gone the way it's gone Mm -hmm. And I will continue to to feel that that way. I think no matter what, um, but it, it's it's just crazy to think how fragile almost our timeline is. Yeah, I, I you nailed it, dude. This this podcast has been very very good for us and for people listening, and it's been sort of kind of a house of cards for a bit. I, and, it, and you know what I mean? Not that we've never talked about let's stop doing this. But there is one of those things where since both cups runneth over, it's like, <laughs> God, like I, I'm trying to I'm doing everything I can. Like it, it, I can't. It's been like several weeks in a row now where I am hustling to finish the podcast edit Thursday night. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I wasn't I wasn't um, slacking. I wasn't. Um, but I always make me sweat because I'm doing the thumbnail like minutes before the, yeah, the, yeah. the episode goes live. Yeah, I, I, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm not procrastinating. It just turns out like, like that's. I, I think I, I sent you a, a, a thing the other day because with all the different projects that we got going on, and plus I'm still working full time. I sent you a thing. I said there's not enough minutes in the week. Like I was able to get it down to the mm. number of minutes. There's not enough minutes in the week. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was like one of those things where I'm like, everything's like a house of cards, but I still, I'm with you. I'm, I'm in the same boat. I still have the motivation to uh, keep it all going because it's a passion project. I think you, you, you put it perfectly, but I'd be lying right to your face if I said I, I'm, I'm not hopeful that it keeps blowing up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to keep moving. The right well, direction. yeah. I mean, I, there's multiple reasons why we would want the podcast to continue to grow, yeah. right? To reach more people. You know, we, it, if we do, really do feel like we're bringing goodness to the world through, things that we talk about on this podcast and, and, and all that, then yeah, obviously we want that to reach more, more ears and, and eyes and, and uh, make, make more lives better if we can. And then obviously, uh, you know, with growth, uh, things like this could potentially monetarily be, be beneficial for us as well. And well, that's just it. I like doing this so much. There's a big part of me that kind of wishes it was all we did sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think that because if, if we're put, putting out a, a decent product right now, that's all, that's all well and good. We are creating this podcast with the on fumes on. I mean, <laughs> barely on fumes, yeah. like barely right. on fumes, right? So imagine if we could actually do it right. Yeah, like that. Like I think I think we do a lot of things right with this podcast, and I think we do a lot of things wrong. Yeah, you know, imagine if we did it right. That's because I'm very passionate about the product that we've put out there. Imagine if we did it right. If we actually got to make it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, get, give it, like, the, the proper TLC. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. maybe I could have, like, made a list like you did on things you wanted to talk about today. Which I made this morning sitting in this chair. You know <laughs> okay. what I mean? Like, right. that's what Fair I'm saying. Enough. Like, it's not Fair like enough. like everything is, like, yeah. as as you're dialing in the camera, I'm, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It, it, it sounds like, like we're phoning it in, and I don't think we're phoning it in. I just, I think that it's being created on fumes, like you said. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, uh, we, we, we have a very big passion around doing this podcast, and I don't see it ending. I mean, we're on 71. Uh, I brought the clock with us into our new set just because it's a thing. Yep. Uh, and I, 
I don't think I would have thought when we started that we were going to make a 71. And I don't now that we're so at either. 71, I don't have any thought that this is going away anytime soon. I like that. I like that. So now let's have fun. Let's wrap up with a little, let's put a twist on what if. Everything's been what if this happened. Now let's do what if forward thinking. Ooh. What if we don't stop knowing this? What if we, we this becomes the, the like what we want it to become and five years from now, it's very, very different. You know oh, what I mean? Man. Like an actual proper, pro like very professional setup. Maybe we have writers. Maybe we're, there's travel involved. Uh, I mean, what so if? many subjects we want to talk about, but we, we hold ourselves back because we want experts we want to experts, come in. Yeah. And, and we just don't have those connections right now. Right. And if we got bigger, we could we could make those connections, yeah. you know? Ah, uh, man. Yeah, that's a dream. That's, that's a dream. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, this is, yeah, that's yeah. forward thinking what if. <laughs> huh? <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's get there. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen on our timeline, yeah. you know, and we won't let any any butterflies get in our way. None. none. <laughs> so you guys keep enjoying the show because we do love doing it. We, we absolutely <laughs> love doing this and uh, we appreciate all the amazing feedback um, that we get. So uh, in the comments, throw down some of your own what ifs. Ooh. Right. Everybody has those moments in their lives that what if I had gone left instead of right or up instead of down? Do that. Like have some fun and just imagine and don't and like you said, it's this is not an, an exercise um, to uh, get melancholy on the way on right. what could have been. That's not what this right. is. It's more of like I wonder what could have been, not how much better life could have been. That's not how this works. You can't do that. That's a that's a that's a a downward spiral that you uh, that will pull you down. Yeah. And you can't you can't undo. So just have some fun. Show me in the comments. Show us in the comments what. Uh, Love to hear the stories. Is, we know. we do read the comments, by the way. We just don't have time to respond. So keep them coming. We yeah. we love them and for the algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do it. Fill it out. All right, let's keep it going, man. Let's keep it going. Do one of these. See you next time. See ya. That was come on, God. So Left sad. hand. Well, I mean, you can't be okay. So if you get. <laughs>